I'm glad for each one of you and I'm happy that you are here this morning. It is not by accident that you are here. It's God who brought you here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you are in God's presence, there is something very special for you. You can come to God's presence at any moment because it is an open throne of grace. In any other place, if you want to go, you need to take an appointment. But as a child of God, at any moment, you can come to his presence. He's always waiting for you. When you have no time for him, he has all the time for you. When you really don't need him, he still wants you. Some of you are here this morning seeking for some answers in your life. Some of you are here this morning with struggles and problems and failures, which has happened because of some mistakes you've made. But my Jesus is going to rewrite your whole history and make it beautiful. History is nothing but his story. Hallelujah. History is nothing but his story. The whole world is divided into two by Jesus in the middle. AD and BC. Jesus is the center of our life. Jesus is everything. The Bible begins, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. God is able to create something from nothing. If we need to create building, we need raw material. We need to create, make a car, we need raw material. You need to make a pump, you need raw material. Without nothing, and I say you make some, something, you can't make it. You will say immediately, I need the atta or maida or rice or... But God doesn't need anything. He says, I can make everything out of nothing. Only God can do that. So you may be nothing, a big zero now. God can make you a hero in one minute by his word. In the beginning, God created everything from nothing by his strong and mighty word. In John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning there was a word, and the word was with God, and word was God. Everything that was created was by the word of God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and that is Jesus Christ. The word of God, which took format in the womb of Mary, is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And well, the, when the word becomes formatted in our life, in our computer, in our hardware, then we become Christ men. Hallelujah. And we become people who are changed by the power of God. How many of you want to have a complete transformation this morning? How many of you are looking for a higher level of your life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only thing that can transform you is the word of God. The world was null and void. Everything was dark and empty. There was darkness. You know, when there is nothing, the only thing that is left is darkness. Idle mind is the devil's workshop. So when you have nothing in your ha heart, nothing in your mind, then that is the best time for devil to play around. The world was dull and dark and void. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, 3. But the spirit of God was hovering over the water. The word that is used for hovering in the original translation is like how the mother hen sits over the egg to hatch. Now we have electrical incubators for automatic hatching. But in our younger days, we had this hen sitting over the eggs to hatch. Anybody who has seen that hatching process? Oh, you have still have it. Okay. Till what time is that? 12.45. So the Holy Spirit was sitting over the earth, which was null and void. If something has to happen in your life, you have to allow the Spirit of God to hover over you. Here is a hen sitting with 20 eggs underneath. But there is a naughty little egg which rolls out every time. And this hen with this piece. 
like beak like this, puts it down inside and again. Then it will roll down backwards. With the leg, she will put it in. Then it will walk out sideways. With the side wings, puts it inside. But this egg is so roly-poly. Never wants to stay under the heat of the hen. Always jumping out. Very active. As the days go by, suddenly the middle one starts cluck. One comes out. Second one comes out. But this jumpy one remains out cold and clammy. You break it, it stings. It lost its life and chance for living. If you allow this morning the Holy Spirit to hover over you, all the dead areas in your life are going to be transformed. And new life is going to come out from within you. And you are going to break your shell. And something which you have never experienced before, something brand new is going to happen within you. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you really believe that this is going to happen within you? Hallelujah. Bangalore is waiting a great moment. If so many of you who are lifted your hand this morning are going to experience the power of resurrection of the Holy Spirit in your life, this whole city is going to be shaken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blood of Christ cleanses us from all sins. And the stripe on the cross of Calvary heals us from all sickness. The cross and the death on the cross of Calvary was not a human sacrifice. It's not a martyrdom. It was a son of God who died. The blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary was not A, B positive, O positive, B positive. My son's blood will be the mixture of mine and my wife's. It was the Holy Spirit that impregnated Mary by the word and the blood that flew through the veins and arteries of Jesus Christ was a divine heavenly blood. And that is why it's called the precious blood. Whoo! Hallelujah! And that blood does not do any covering up job, but cleanses your sin completely. It washes away your sin. It wipes out your sin. It makes you a new person. The precious blood of Jesus is here this morning to make you into a new boy, new girl, young man, young woman. You have been living a rotten life, wretched life, dead life, not allowing the Holy Spirit to work on you, jumping around, moving around, escaping. But this is the day that God wants to touch your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thanking heaven for this day. I'm thanking God for this beautiful moment when his hand is touching some of you. Hallelujah. For a deeper relationship and a deeper commitment with Jesus. Hallelujah. God has brought you here with a specific purpose. Not to give you information, but a revelation of what God wants to do in your life. Shall we turn our eyes for this um, morning's meditation to the word of God. When Jesus was walking in the world, wherever he was, there was a miracle. I like to read another story about a miracle from John's Gospel, chapter 5. Can somebody help me with John's Gospel, chapter 5, the first few verses? Je yeah. Jesus had the habit of going to Jerusalem, which is the city of God, to pray and enjoy the feast of the Jews. And then what happens? There was a pool near a gate called the Sheep Gate, and this pool was called Bethesda. Yes, that was a beautiful pool. What was the speciality of the pool? 
there was a great number of disabled people lying near the pool. Bethel AG English Service is the Bethesda for Bangalore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do you make out whether it's the Bethesda? You have a whole lot of specialists hanging around there. The list of people are mentioned there. Can you read who are they? The blinds, the lame, the paralyzed. All kinds of sickness will hang out there. Don't get upset if somebody says they have a problem. Get excited because God has the answer. Don't say, oh no, how sad. There's nothing to be sad about it because God has already done the victory on the cross of Calvary. When somebody comes to me with cancer, I am a neurosurgeon, I am a doctor, I know what cancer means, but my Jesus also knows what cancer means. If he has created normal cells in this body and he has made mechanisms by which he can destroy every bit of cancer in our body, he can rejuvenate the same body and make a total healing immediately. I have seen tumors melt, wound heal in 15 seconds, paralyzed people walk purely by prayer and not by medicine. A hemiplegic, hemiplegic person healed by surgery or medicine will be walking like this he had a stroke he had medical treatments and he walks i had a patient with a stroke came in coma dying from medical college on the ventilator declared almost dead i prayed and the next day she opened her eyes then third day fourth day she started moving i pulled the tube out she started walking she walked normally <laughs> hallelujah when the healing is divine, it is complete. When the healing is from a super, super specialty local hospital, it will always have the scar on it. God heals without scar this morning. God heals completely. God transforms completely. God makes you into a new person this morning. God is here right now and he wants to touch your life. If you are willing, this is your day of salvation. This is the day of your healing. This is the day of your miracle. Because Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What hallelujah? Day of miracle. Hallelujah. Learn one thing if you don't learn anything else. At least to say hallelujah. Because in heaven there is no neurosurgery. Only hallelujah. You will have uh, asthma attack there. If you don't know how to say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. God is here to touch your life. If you allow him to touch him. Touch you. What happened? He went there and the pool of Bethesda. Let's go ahead and read what's happened there. 38 years invalid. Let me say paraplegic or something. From here he's not working. 38 years. I'm imagining neurologically. Invalid. If I was that man, I would have left 10 years before. Why lie in the Bethesda healing pool, which where many people come and heal, waiting for 38 years? I thank God for this man. 25th silver jubilee he celebrated there still waiting for a miracle why why because he kept on seeing miracles every year he knew he is going to be changed one day he knew there is going to be transformation going to happen to him many times he must have thought i better quit this place he was there for 38 years very desperate. Then what happened? Jesus saw him. That is enough. If Jesus can see you this morning, your day is made. Your life is made. It is important to know Jesus 
And it is equally important that Jesus knows you. I know Rajiv Gandhi, but he doesn't know me. There was a lady called Diana who lived. I was a bit fond of her. I attended her, fu uh, her uh, marriage on the TV. I saw her funeral on the TV. I knew all about her. I knew many of her dresses, what she liked. I also knew some things about her personal life. I even wouldn't mind call her, calling her personally as Dai or something like that. But I never had a chance to do that. She never knew me, but it's good to know God, but it's also important that he knows you. If you ask Diana, who is Prince Charles, she will say, yes, yes, I know that guy. I knew him for some time. Uh, just before her death, if you call her and ask, some doody doody? That fellow? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's also pretty nice. George Kovur, she wouldn't know. It is important that you know Jesus, but equally and more important that his eyes are on you this morning. His eyes are on the righteous. His eyes are on the people who are seeking him. If you are a true seeker, God is right now looking towards you. He is excited about people who seek him. I want to re say two, three words which you can go back and uh, look up and just write it down because of shortage of time. Psalm 40 verse 16 which says, The Lord... Let all those who seek rejoice and be glad in thee. Let's all those who seek God rejoice and be glad in him. When you start seeking God itself, God gives you an opportunity to start rejoicing. When you start seeking God, it, the very moment himself, God starts giving you an opportunity to rejoice. Rejoice. In the presence of God, the greatest thing that you have is what? Joy. Joy of salvation. Joy of presence of God. If God is here right now, many of us will be sitting like this. No. As he said, he has to really open your mouth. In, in England, if you have to praise the queen and sing the song of, about the queen and the praise anthem, um, the military rule is that the mouth should be at least two and a half inch wide. Compulsory. I wish we had some rules like that. If something has to go in, you have to keep your mouth open. If you keep praising God in between, it will happen automatically. Hallelujah. 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 The moment you start seeking God, the joy will come immediately. Asa sought the Lord for many years, if you go into Second Chronicles and read the story of the king of Asa, Asa sought the Lord for many years, but in his sickness he did not seek him, and God did not like it. He mentions that very clearly. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 12 to 14. Asa sought the Lord for everything else, but for his sickness he didn't seek the Lord, and God did not like it. Imagine, there were better doctors in his country so he thought why seek the Lord let's go to the super specialist and God did not like it he helped Asa to live all these years but when he didn't seek him God didn't like him in the same book of Chronicles it says when God when the other king sought after God God prospered him God favored him God put more years in his life when Hezekiah was going to die of a sickness when he sought God God extended 15 more years for him. If you seek God this morning, his hand is going to work for you. If you come to his presence, he is going to touch you. His eyes went straight to the man who was there for 38 years. And then what happened? He knew. Just can you continue, please, brother? Yeah. When he learned that he was in this condition for such a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? What a question. Lying in the pool of healing, waiting to get well, Jesus is asking, do you want? This morning he wants to ask you the same question. 
do you really mean business or are you here to just see a show sing some song and just say a few hallelujah and go do you really want to be a child of god do you really want to have a personal relationship with jesus christ do you really want to go to the kingdom of heaven do you really want to have a blessing direct from god are you serious with what you're doing this morning do you want to be healed he asked another blind man once and said what do you want me to do for you what is your first priority i want to see that's what he said we would have said i want to get some money i want a big uh, car or i want a big mansion his first priority was that he wanted to see what do you want jesus to do for you this morning do you really want a change in your life do you really want to be healed he's asking this man who is waiting for 38 years his want has to be confessed in romans it says believe in the heart and confess with your mouth then you will be saved many of us are silent christians they don't confess they don't tell anybody openly they go quietly they come to a big church sit in the corner clap hands and go back and receive some small gifts from god and enjoy the life they don't like to be the ambassador of the kingdom of god they don't want to be the party on the army of the god or god's army they don't want to declare loudly that i am so and so if you ask rajiv gandhi's son who is your father oh rajiv gandhi you know my father he is rajiv gandhi you ask sachin's son who is your father oh, my father is sachin no, my father is Sachin Tandulkar, the world famous cricketer. You ask, forget about all that. You ask my three children, who is your father? You know, my father is George Cole, he's a neurosurgeon, he does this, he does that. All kinds of stories they will tell. You have a heavenly father who is more powerful than anybody, local fathers. Be proud. Open your mouth and declare that you are the child of God. The more you confess and more you declare, more power you will receive. More authority you will receive. More blessing you will receive. More inheritance you will receive. More, more and more closeness you will have with him. Declare loudly that you are the child of God. You will live by the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Why is a neurosurgeon coming all the way to Bangalore, closing down his institution. Those who were not here at any time, not having listened to my testimony, anybody left? Oh, there are still more people. I need two days, brother. <laughs> See, I can't start from any end of my testimony because every day is a testimony. So I don't know which one to start now. Let me tell you the basic one first. I was born as a hydrocephalic baby. I don't know whether you know what hydrocephalus means. Hydro means water, cephalus means head. Have you seen such children with huge head, water in the brain? Destined to be a mentally retarded, sick child, good for nothing. But God saw me in my mother's womb. Even before I was formed, his eyes had already seen me. I was fearfully and wonderfully made and I praise him because of that. Even with water in my head, I was fearfully and wonderfully made. Some of you are so upset with the small nose you have. <laughs> they look in the mirror and say, how beautiful is the other girl sitting next to me? Look at me. You are so worried about uh, the lack of hair you have. See, we have a big business called Gulf Gate in Kerala. I don't know whether you have Gulf Gate here. All the youngsters who lose their hair, they put a new this thing. I had a patient last week from Gulf. I saw him in the OP. I admitted him. I treated him. He had a paralysis weakness. He recovered. He was leaving. The night before I went, I saw a different person sitting on the bed. I said, oh, no. They come to the wrong room. Name everything is right. Then I saw the wig lying there. Then I said, let me put that and put it up and... Because I have some problems, I thought I should make it up for. He said, no doctor, no doctor. You look beautiful and handsome with all the losses you have. <laughs> because you don't lose anything. The more grace you have is far better than the hair you have. Yeah. 
you are so worried about how you look because you don't have Jesus Christ flowing in your life if you sit and pray yesterday we were teaching as you sit and pray your face will start transfiguring you don't need fair and lovely you don't need powder Moses was with God when he came down they couldn't look at his face because his face was most glamorous you want to be star in Kerala and in India Bollywood star Hollywood star all kinds of star but Bible says his children are the stars for eternity I'm one of the greatest stars living <laughs> hallelujah even even if they give me a big uh, program or shootout I don't go for the small local stars in our meeting I remember once Amida Bachchan came in Bombay for a neurosurgery meeting and he had a couple of surgeries so neurosurgeons have operated him so he's very fond of us he stood next to us and talked to all of us I didn't feel anything different but a lot of people were very excited <laughs> because I have seen Jesus Christ who is far greater and far better and more beautiful than any of the stars in the world He said, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. He is the Savior. He also said, you are the light of the world. <sighs> Not a carbon light or fluorescent light or any kind of light. The light that comes from God is so powerful that it flows from your body every day. It hits people. They get healed. Jesus saw that this man was there for 38 years. He was so upset. Oh, how sad you are sitting here for 38 years. What will I do now? No, he knew what to do. He asked him, do you want to get well? Why didn't he just heal him anyway? He knew what was the problem. He wanted a commitment from him. Then what did he say? He did not say no. He, he, many of us are smart. We don't say no or yes immediately. You know, halfway through. What did he say? Sir. Sir. Huh. I, have no I have no one to help me. I'm a very poor man. I'm paralyzed. I can't move. So many people have jumped into this water when the angel stirs up. Every year there is miracles. I have told some of them also, please come next year and help me to put it in first time. But they got so busy with their family and building houses and uh, making their children get married. So they none of them came back to put me in. I'm still waiting. There is nobody to push me. Many of us are like this. We want crutches in the kingdom of God. Somebody to say, please pray. Please read the Bible. Come to church every Sunday. Hallelujah. 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 Almost everybody looked up and raised their hands when they want to be transformed. Almost so many people committed when they said they want to have a new experience. But your desire is not so much. I want you to do an exercise. Close your mouth and nose with your hand like this. Don't take it out till I tell you. Hold it tightly. Please, nobody is all are playing the fool. Take it out when you really want to breathe. Just take it out and then take the grab. See how you desire. What do you desire? Air. Free air. How much you desire? Your hand goes automatically. Like that you need to desire for the anointing and touch of God this morning. And you will receive it. You are looking for the other man to lay his hand. Or you're looking for the pastor or somebody to counsel. You're looking for answers here and there. When Jesus says, I am the living bread. I am the manna. I am the answer. I am the healer. Believe me, look at me. I'm here to bless you. You're looking here and there. So then Jesus told this man, never mind, nobody has helped. I will help you. Come on, hold the hands. What did he say? Yeah. Can you imagine? If he could have got up, he would have got up and jumped into the pool many times before. And Jesus is telling, get up and take up the mat and go. 
I will put an in, how many of you are from the medical field? Oh, again, we have a lot. Of, so you will understand. If somebody is paralyzed for 38 years and you strip off their pants, how strong their legs will be? There'll be two broomsticks with nothing. And it'll be stiff and hard like this. They want knees won't bend. Feet will be like that. Like this. So this man was like that. Stiff. Not moving. No sensation. Nothing. And he says, get up. He looked at Jesus. What? When Jesus broke five loaves of bread and fish and gave it to all, uh, all the disciples, how many pieces each one had, you know? Small pieces. Peter was having the small piece of fish and bread. Jesus said, you give 5,000 behind. <laughs> Jesus looked, Peter looked at Jesus' face again. Some problem. The fish and so small, like the Holy Communion piece we had. We have to feed 5,000. Then Peter took big courage and decided, yes, I am going to feed in the name of Jesus and all. And he's turning around. The biggest man is sitting with a big mouth. This whole thing is enough to go into his mouth. Nothing happens. But when in faith, when he turned and gave this small piece, it started multiplying. When you start the action in faith, it is then you are going to be healed. It is when the priest let touch the Red Sea, the Red Sea splits. You have to carry the ark in the middle of the water and touch the water. The miracle will happen. You have to take the broken bread, go to your next person and deliver it. It is going to multiply. The widow started pouring the oil and it started increasing. You have to start pouring out your life today. You are going to be increasing. You are going to start pouring out what you have. You are going to increase. The hands and legs that are weak are going to be strengthened the very moment you listen to God's voice. I would have said, Lord, let me go and do some Ayurveda massage and come back and then I will lift up the mat. Mat, let it remain here. He said, get up, pick up the mat and walk. The bed that was making him lie down for 38 years, Jesus wanted him to pick up. That also on the day of Sabbath. That also for making people to ask questions. God likes make people making questions at you. If you have no questions and people don't ask questions, you have nothing anyway. If people ask questions and people are excited about you, that means there is something. Yesterday I said, if somebody stows, throws a stone on the tree, that means the tree is full of mangoes. Only when you bear fruit, stones will come on you. Only they were, if he was walking without the mat, just casually, many people would not have asked him on the day of Sabbath. But when he picked up his mat immediately, what happened? We'll close with that. Shall we turn to that verse? And... Once the man was cured. He was cured when? He picked up his At once. The moment he decided to do an effort of faith, an act of faith, the first step of faith, healing came immediately. When does deliverance and healing come into your life? When you take the first step of faith. In faith, today, when you declare something for your life, God is going to heal you. God is going to bless you. When I started my building my hospital about eight years back, I had nothing in hands. I didn't even know how I will complete. Neurosurgery equipment cost in lakhs and crores, not one or two. But now I have everything because God gave me everything. I don't know from where it came, but it all came. When God has a plan in your life, he gives everything. My grace is sufficient for you, and my strength makes perfect in your weakness. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. My God is sufficient for you. I will close with a small story. One man, long time back, when India was ruled by Rajas, went to the king and said, I'm a poor man. I need my daughter to be married. Please help me with some money. King immediately called the ministers and found out about this guy. 
and found that he was a straightforward, good, honest man. He said, come forward, stand next to me. And he put his hand and put this into the next bowl full of diamonds and jewels and put, gave this man. His hand was shivering. He picked up his dhoti like this and held it like that. And kilos worth of diamond and gold fell in his dhoti. He was so shocked. He was worried. He was afraid. He gave everything back onto the side and said, Master, allow me to take one piece and go home. That is enough for my daughter's wedding. King said, you asked according to your desire. I gave according to my riches. Today, heaven is waiting with all his riches to make you a citizen of the kingdom of God and bless you with all the privileges, all the honor, all the blessing that is due to a child of God. How many of you are willing? How many of you are willing for a total surrender and commitment? Shall we close our eyes for a word of prayer? God is challenging many of you in different ways this morning. But are you ready? Do you want to be healed? What do you want me to do for you? Are you willing to have a closer walk with him? Heaven is waiting for you. The riches and glory and inheritance and all the authority and power and protection is waiting for you. Are you willing to receive it? Lord, here I am. Accept me as I am. I come to you. How many of you would dedicate and re-surrender your life? If there is anybody here for the first time and who has never accepted Jesus as your personal savior, today is the day of your salvation. Open your heart and let him in. My Jesus is too decent. He will never break open the door or jump over the wall. He says, I stand at the door of the heart of yours and I am knocking. Will you open your heart for him? Today is the day of salvation. My God is sufficient for all your needs and he will take care. How many of you are willing to have him as your personal savior? Those who have accepted him earlier, how many of you are rededicating your life for a new life and closer walk with him? How many of you want to be a disciple, a minister, a servant of God? Today is the day of rededication. How many of you will join for Bible colleges and Bible studies? Go into remote areas and say, Lord, I will serve you. How many of you will contribute by financially, physically, for the work of the church and prosperity and the kingdom move? Today is the day that God wants you to do. If you have made any dedication, God bless you. If there is anybody who has decided and wanting a prayer, I would request you to raise your right hand and I'm going to pray for you right now. As you pray yourself, God is going to bless. I see so many hands going up because God is going to bless you. Would you stand up where you are and pray for one minute with me and I will close at this moment because don't miss a blessing which God has for you. Keep your hands lifted up and keep praying and telling God your desire because he's standing next to you. He's Abba Father. He's Heavenly Father. He's there to bless you with anything that you need. Delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He wants to send you back as a changed person. Are you willing to surrender your life into the Spirit, Holy Spirit, that he may transform you and make you a new being? Our most loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful moment. We thank you for all those who have surrendered their life and requested for prayer. Whatever their need be, Lord, we pray that you will touch them. Lord, heal everyone who is sick here right now. In the name of Jesus, we command a healing this evening. This afternoon, we pray that you will touch financial needs. You touch broken homes, broken hearts, situations which are not easily solvable. We know that you are the answer. We bless everyone in Jesus' name. We command a deliverance in Jesus' name. We command a total healing in Jesus' name. We pray that you will send a fresh anointing on everyone who decided this morning. We commit them into your strong and mighty everlasting arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. I thank God for this beautiful time. Beautiful church. Your lovely pastor and his family. And all the co-pastors who are here. I know my running time is running short and I may have to leave by the evening train. I will miss you. I request one thing. Please pray for me and our family. 
and our ministry. We love you. God loves you. God bless you.